am Louise Fletcher and I help artists to find their own creative voice. If you saw my last video, I was talking about talent and how, although we might not all have the prodigious talent of, say, a Picasso, we all have the ability to express ourselves creatively. And what we need to do is just remove some barriers and practice and work. And at the moment I'm practicing and I thought I would share with you what that looks like because it's not all easy for those of us who make our living from art for sure. So what I'm gonna share with you is some practicing I've been doing on faces. I'm currently working on a series of abstracted self-portraits and I think working on other faces can be really helpful. So I'm gonna show you inside my sketchbook and then I'm going to let you watch as I have a go at my latest drawing. This is the actress Judy Dench who I'd been watching being painted on TV so I had a go at drawing her and that one came quite easily. This one of Fleabag um, became, what took so long and is still not quite right. I really enjoyed doing it though it takes me a long time sometimes to get the likeness and I'm all right with that because this is practice. This was a failed drawing on the right. It was supposed to be Maggie Smith, the actress, went really wrong. Next, I did this blind drawing on the left. Sometimes blind drawing helps me see where I've gone wrong on the proportions. That was a whole evening of drawing. And then the next day I tried again and I still haven't got it right. I've written closer, no cigar. This, um, I'm watching a documentary about Picasso at the moment. So I had a go at drawing him. Proportions are a bit off, but I don't mind that. And then Sinead O'Connor, um, which I really like the ethereal nature of this drawing. And so I'm going to continue practicing and choose a new photograph to work on. So I chose this photo of Harrison Ford. It's a good photo, but also I just finished watching him in Shrinking on Apple TV, in which he is hilarious. So I thought he has a good face to draw. Let's have a go. So I begin um, with a pencil. This is a black wing pencil. I begin working quite subtly, just trying to map out the features. And I work quite lightly initially. And the reason for this is I know I'll get it wrong. I'm not good enough at this to get everything in the right place. And I need patience and perseverance because I... I just won't be able to do this in the way I would love to be able to just rattle it out quickly, the outline, so I could work on making an interesting drawing. At the moment, a lot of my effort goes into just getting the features right. And as anyone knows who's worked on portraits, just the slightest thing wrong, just the slightest part out of place, and you've lost the likeness completely. So it's um, you do have to get things in the right place and it's quite precise and my more recent work has been abstract and abstract landscapes where that is not the case so it's a different kind of challenge than this where just being more exact is important and there I moved the eyeball across on the right which helped a lot because the eye was too close to the other one and as I go along, I'm just making those adjustments. And even though it's it's getting darker, I'm still not pressing on hard enough that I can't delete things, which is a good thing because this mouth was just all wrong. And shortly, I'm going to have to remove that. I was also struggling a bit with the shape of the face. And you'd think, wouldn't you, that you can just look at it. It's there. Surely you can just copy that. But I'm usually working with a photo that is a different size than I'm drawing. So that presents a challenge, of course, because you've got to translate the size over. Um, and as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't grid or trace to get things in the right place. So it's up to me to, to find them and put them in the right place. But that mouth definitely wasn't. I put my hand over there just to see, does the no do the nose and eyes look semi-right? Which they did. Uh, so I knew my main problem was with the mouth. Subsequently, I think I made a problem of the nose and the eyes, but I'll show you that at the end. Um, and I, I move around the drawing, working on different parts of it, because I find if I just stayed focused on that mouth, I'd get more and more frustrated and laboured on it, and I'd work on it so much that I wouldn't be able to erase or draw any more over top. 
So I like to kind of move around and not get myself stuck in any one place. This is a bit like when I'm painting, I will move between different paintings to keep everything fresh and interesting. It's a bit the same even within a drawing, I'll move around on it rather than getting stuck on one area. I'm often going back and looking and sitting. I've cut all that out here. I'm sitting and looking at the reference, in this case a photograph, but if it's a life model, I'll be looking at the model and not drawing for a while just to get a sense of what's happening there. Really, really looking. And I find when I'm off on my drawing, it's a problem of looking. It's not a problem of, I can use a pencil. We can all make marks with a pencil. It's looking properly so that you're putting the marks in the right place. And that is when people say I can't draw, they mean I can't, I can't sit, I can't look properly and then translate what I'm seeing into a mark. But usually it's the looking part that's the problem. We start to assume things, or I do. Like, oh, I know that's that's Harrison Ford's mouth. I shall focus on his mouth when really you've got to focus on the lights and darks. Here I kept adding and then erasing lines. I, I didn't want the drawing. I get so caught up in trying to make it look like the person. It can get quite boring. And so by erasing lines, I was hoping to give that sense of lost and found lines so that your brain has to interpret where things are. But I felt I got quite precise. Here I was bringing in a water-soluble felt tip and uh, that added a little bit of colour and now I'm just adding some more colour with some coloured pencil. I added a bit of charcoal. And here I'm trying to now bring lights and darks more strongly out and when I touch the mouth there I lost the lightness again. Those little touches of charcoal to the mouth just made this not right and I didn't see it for a while but then I saw it and tried to like make some changes to that mouth, but I'd lost it. It's those subtle changes that, you know, and I'm now changing the face to try and bring the likeness back. But the like the problem, I believe, is in that mouth. I can see watching this back. Now I felt like, OK, I've got a drawing. I wrote my favorite quote from the show here on the page. I've got a drawing, but it's boring. I want to disrupt it. I'm not going to get that mouth right now. I feel like I'm giving up on this drawing. I'm okay with where it is, but I want it to be more interesting. So I started erasing parts of it um, and I'd drawn that orange oil pastel over top. I want more interest in the actual drawing. I don't want it to just be a likeness and I want it to have a feeling of Harrison Ford in it, which I think... I can get by some more interesting marks because I think it was certainly his character in that show was an interesting man. I made the mouth even worse here, I think. <laughs> maybe not. That little bit of charcoal maybe wasn't too bad. The mouth was already messed up. But these lines add a lot of interest and just make me like the, the drawing as a drawing a lot more than I did when it was just all clean. And so that's where I left the drawing. Not the greatest likeness, but I will come back and have another go, as I did with the Maggie Smith. It's just about practice. And I wanted to show you this video to show that not everything you do has to be brilliant and that we cannot learn how to do something without really working at it. And even though I'm doing abstracted self-portraits, there needs to be structure and knowledge behind that and I need to sharpen up my drawing skills so more practice to come.